Well, what can I say? Oh my God, the family court appears to be disintegrating into total and utter farcical carnage. Family court judges up and down England and Wales are losing the plot, as we can now add more insanity to the list of spurious domestic abuse and coercive control allegations being used to throw the non-resident parent under the family court bus. Spurious allegations made by resident parents, who are mostly mothers, designed to humiliate, embarrass, manipulate and to emotionally break and destroy the non-resident parent, who are mostly fathers and they don't get much better than this one. But before I delve into these new levels of unimaginable family court madness, I simply must run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the Mackenzie Friend UK network and fearless family court vlogger. I have been a Mackenzie Friend for over a decade and in my vlogs, my views and opinions are, of course, entirely my own. Now, I want to take this opportunity to put the record straight. It makes me laugh when I read on social media platforms posts, mainly from the Sisterhood Brigade, saying Phil must have an agenda. He must have been one of those fathers that the court denied child contact with. And this is his mission to bang his own drum. Well, how funny is that? Because I never went through family court for child arrangements. At the end of my marriage, we sorted things out amicably between ourselves and didn't even need a consent order. The truth is that I simply report what I observe with my own eyes, the experiences that people tell me and what I read every day to then expose the broken, inept, incompetent and incomprehensible family court system, where I have come to the conclusion that, in over a decade of working within the family courts, I have witnessed more harm done to children, relationships, families and futures than I have seen within my entire career as a police officer. Think about that for a second. And on that astonishing observation, let's continue. How do I put this on the table? I see judges from Planet Stupid routinely and incompetently mismanaging first hearings and the application of Practice Directions 12J when deciding on the relevance, necessity and purpose of fact findings. Now, I am not talking about what I observe as the 20% of cases where quite clearly there is abhorrent domestic abuse that we all reasonably understand that needs appropriate safeguarding. I am only talking about the mudslinging allegations based on the type of unfortunate and regrettable incidents that can exist in most relationships over time. I'm not condoning these incidents, but what is totally shocking is when they are twisted by vengeful, spiteful resident parents to throw their ex under the family court bus and to easily manipulate the unfit for purpose family courts to reduce, restrict, minimise and deny child contact. In the mudslinging cesspit of hate, it is now increasingly common for spurious allegations to be based on alleged sexual behaviour. So it's time for you to understand the depths some people are actually willing to go. How would you respond as a father at the end of your relationship where all you want to do is to re-establish contact with your children or to stabilise current contact and your ex responds by throwing every bit of mud that they can conjure up 
And one of the allegations is that you once, a number of years ago, the exact date and time is not known, pressured them to masturbate you. Now, the scenarios may differ. For example, that she was woken up during the early hours, he was feeling a little horny, she was half asleep, but it all becomes a bit blurred after that. Alternatively, perhaps she wanted to go to bed early and he wanted a bit of how's your father. And she gave a bit of a quick hand relief whilst mildly protesting to sort him out. But whatever the potentially understandable scenario, the question is surely this. How on planet Earth are such spurious allegations being considered by judges as potentially relevant to whether you should see your children or not? It's unbelievable. But there again, when you have judges from Planet Stupid making findings that a father once walked in an angry manner, or when a teenage boy farts on his father and the father responds with a few expletives, a judge determines that his res response should be considered as child abuse relevant to future contact. Then, quite frankly, any insane madness goes. So, as the father, you are faced with such allegations, and you can only imagine that you must be in Alice in Wonderland sitting at the Mad Hatter's tea party as your ex is actually alleging either sexual assault or sexually coercively controlling behaviour for an incident years ago in relation to a hand job that you can't even remember. Was there on one occasion over the last eight years where she may have masturbated me when she didn't really want to? How did I know she didn't want to? She never said, no, stop, that's sexual abuse. What am I exactly going to tell the court in my defence? Am I really going to be cross-examined by a barrister about having been masturbated? Is a judge going to find findings of fact that I am a coercive sexual abuser and destroy me and my reputation? Well, the answer is yes, potentially. All of those things are now possible. Well, if that terrifying scenario is going through the minds of fathers, let's try and fathom out why the mother may be making such low-level, literally blow the bell, spurious allegations. I don't believe that anyone in their right mind just decides to make those allegations unless they are completely motivated by hate and are being directed to do so. And I believe that I may have the answer. Many of you may be thinking that the Mackenzie Friend UK Network is a dedicated father support site. It isn't. You may be surprised to learn that the ratio of fathers to mothers seeking brilliant support and help through the Mackenzie Friend UK network is 53% fathers and 47% mothers, based on our last 1,000 potential clients. Now, this is interesting. The mothers who contact me fall into two general groups. Group 1, those who are clearly victims of abhorrent domestic abuse seeking support. They understand my vlogs because they object to those who undermine the family court system and the real victims of domestic abuse by disgracefully clogging up the system, causing the true victims delays in getting support and protection. They also understand that the false victimhood brigade are themselves often the abusers of children. A serious issue that Kafkas and the family court seem to conveniently ignore. The second group of mothers contacting me are those who may have started off on the path of hate but now want to follow the path of light. 
understanding how harmful and destructive the original path was. This group is particularly interesting and on the hundreds and hundreds of conversations I have had with mothers now looking to take a different, more positive path, a general pattern seems to emerge. First and foremost, that the first port of call for mothers is often to the all too often destructive family lawyers. And many have informed me that they have been pushed down the path of making allegations in order to obtain legal aid. Once on that path, they found it almost impossible to get off because they felt trapped by the spurious allegations. They become fearful that if they now retract the allegations that they will have to pay the money back and are held hostage by their lawyers who keep pushing them down that route of conflict. Secondly, many mothers are signposted to seek the support of IDVAs, Independent Domestic Violence Advisors. Mothers have reported to me that their IDVAs place them under a heightened sense of victimhood. For example, they probe and dig out anything that may even slightly resemble a regrettable incident in the past during the relationship and then portray that as significant domestic abuse. Has your ex ever raised their voice to you in anger? That's domestic abuse. You are a victim of domestic abuse. Have you ever felt pressured to do a sexual act you didn't want to do? Well, you are a victim of sexual assault and sexually coercive controlling behaviour. You must tell the judge and I will even help you to write your statement. These mothers who break away from that nightmare of feeling controlled and manipulated by third parties are incredibly brave. And many are now turning to the Mackenzie Friend UK network for support to take a different and more positive approach. Not turning the family court into a battleground of adult conflict. So, what about the family court judges who seem devoid of any understanding around the realities of life and relationships? Who sit behind the wheel of the family court like Mr Bean driving his car, oblivious to the carnage they may be causing in their rear view mirrors? I know. Let's lighten the mood just a little and have some fun at their expense. I wonder why some judges may be so keen to hear these types of obviously spurious allegations all the way through to fact findings. I don't know, but perhaps some of them enjoy it a little bit too much. I'm not saying that is true, I'm just throwing that thought out there for a masturbate on the issue. Now, that thought may seem totally outrageous if it wasn't for genuine national press headlines such as these. I kid you not, this is a true story. In our courts, a total of three judges were sacked for watching explicit sexual material on their work computers, whilst a fourth resigned before he could be sacked. So, when you enter the family court and your judge clearly hasn't bothered to read your position statement, Perhaps they've had their minds on other matters. I don't know, perhaps they have been more focused on watching the next episode of The Adventures of Miss Whiplash.
Well, unfortunately, I haven't had time to read your position statement for this hearing. I've been um, tied up doing some important judicial research. Now, all this raises a second important question. These judges must surely be terrified that their own personal lives may be scrutinised one day in family court if they were ever to divorce and will do everything to ensure that they are never at the end of spurious allegations. I wonder what may happen behind their closed doors. Let's take a look. Hello honey, I'm home. I've had such a busy day today doing judicial research. I was wondering, is there any chance of a little hand relief tonight? Really, darling? But it's only been six months since the last time. I feel a little pressured. Oh well, I don't want you to feel pressured. You have to really want to. Oh, darling, go on then. And if it worries you, I formally retract that I felt under pressure. Well, that's marvellous. So how about we meet in the boudoir this evening at 9pm? And don't worry, I will bring the pen and the legally binding hand relief consent form. Well, that was fun. You can't beat a good bit of old-fashioned slapstick British sense of humour, and I'm sure that judges have a sense of humour themselves. Oh, maybe not then. Oops. But of course, this vlog has a very serious message. Once again, it exposes the utter carnage of the family court that in my opinion is now so out of control, being taken over by spurious allegations based on hate and false victimhood, that it has become one of the most dangerous places on the planet for a non-resident parent who are mostly fathers to enter. And on that note, that's me done folks. It's time to conclude. So, if any aspect of this vlog resonates with you, especially mothers who now want to take the path of light, not hate, then please contact me today. Indeed, contact me right now at contactfield.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all of your family court solutions based needs. Until next time, stay strong.